So before we actually get into today's video, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com because, as you can see, they have hooked me up with a load of fresh shirts for this year's World Cup. I've got the England home kit, the England away kit, and also a nice little retro shirt. And you can do exactly the same if you head to JerseyFIFA.com using the link in the description down below. They also do the same for club football as well. The latest home shirts, away shirts, but also some really nice retro kits. If you are interested, head to the link in the description down below and use code JerseyFIFA for a discount when you order. Now into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where, as I said the other day, we are now back with the club football, the club content now that the World Cup is finished. And today we are talking about Manchester United and more importantly, we're talking about Alejandro Garnacho, the young Argentinian superstar who unfortunately wasn't in that Argentina World Cup squad, in my opinion he should have been, but that means he's been fully rested for a month, been training with Eric Ten Hag. Now I want to talk about what can his role in the squad be for the rest of this season. So looking at the next month perhaps, the fixtures coming up, but also for the rest of the course of the season and future seasons as well. What can Garnacho really bring to Manchester United? Now, that does mean that this video is going to be in a slightly different style to normal. We're not going to massively tactically break down his role. I want to talk about certain circumstances, which will give him a chance in the team, things like that. But also, of course, we will look at some of his strengths. And in terms of his strengths, we know what it is. It's playing on that left wing out here. And immediately, that is why I think there is a chance for him to play some football. So if we look at the Manchester United squad and the options that Ten Hag has to choose from, on the left wing, we have Jadon Sancho, Marcus Rashford and Alejandro Garnacho. Now, Marcus Rashford uh, played well at the World Cup for England. In my opinion, didn't play enough football. He should have played more for England. I think it would have given him a better chance. However, because of his exploits at the World Cup, it does mean that he isn't immediately available for Eric Ten Hag. I believe he is actually meeting up with the squad today when this video is going out. So, he isn't ready to come into the team against Burnley, for example, in the Carabao Cup, which I will be covering on the channel. Will he be ready for the game on Boxing Day? I'm really not sure. In terms of fitness levels, I think he's probably fine, because like I said, he didn't play too much for England. However, maybe mentally and like emotionally, but also physically, he maybe needs a little bit of a break, maybe just a couple of weeks, so we will see there. As for Jaden Sancho, we know what Ten Hag has said, that mentally, physically, he isn't in the right state at the moment. Now, what that means exactly, not too sure, but I think we should just kind of respect it rather than trying to delve any further into that. But what that does mean is that Manchester United are coming back from this kind of international break with the World Cup with only one left winger. So even if it is just that first Carabao Cup game against Burnley, Garnacho looks like he's going to get some game time. And that's what I want to talk about. What can his role be for the rest of the season? Is he good enough to come straight into the first team? Is he someone that needs to really be nurtured by Ten Hag? Which I think is the case with a lot of young players. I think just because a young player is good and ready, it's important to manage them. Too many minutes physically can be a problem for a young player, but also mentally it can be a problem for a young player, especially at a club like United. You very much get put straight on that stage, right in the spotlight, and the whole world can see you. I think that's maybe why, from United's point of view, it might be a good thing that he didn't go to the World Cup. Kind of, he kind of burst onto the scene, had that excellent goal last minute against Fulham, which won United some crucial, crucial points. I think it might have been good for his character to just then take the step back and not be at the World Cup, not be in the spotlight. So I think that actually might long-term be a good thing for Manchester United. Even though, from an individual point of view, I think he probably deserved to be in the squad. I think he would have offered them something different. However, what that does mean is that he's going to be fresh for Manchester United. And I think that will be a worry for defenders. A fresh Garnacho is quite a worrying prospect, quite a scary prospect. Because he is just really explosive. He's really direct with the way that he likes to play. Now... I wouldn't say he's explosive in the same way like someone like Marcus Rashford is. Marcus Rashford over 30, 40 yards is ridiculously quick. For me, Garnacho feels like he's a bit more about acceleration, but also the speed of the turn. What he tends to do, and I'll come on to this in a second actually, but what he tends to do when he's in these situations, he likes to get the ball, dribble at the defender. What I like is that he then slows down. We'll see some clips on it in a second. He slows down and then speeds up again. And for me, that is the most effective way to dribble. If we look at this World Cup, for example, we saw Mbappe do it to Kyle Walker. Mbappe only really beat Walker on one occasion in that game. It came from slowing him down and then speeding up again. We saw Neymar do it a couple of times. We even saw Messi do it to Gavardiol. Gavardiol, a young, very physical, very quick defender, maybe the best defender at the tournament, got done by a change of pace. So slowing players down and then speeding up is a great way to dribble because you are then in control of the situation. The defender has to react to your change of speed. That reaction time gives you an advantage. Human reaction time, there is a delay. 
So physically, if you are sprinting, I can't change speed as quick as you can because I'm reacting to you changing speed rather than predicting it. So it makes Gainacho's dribbling very effective. And like I said, we will see it in some clips in a second. I think it makes him really, really dangerous. I think it's something that I would like to see a bit more from footballers. I think it's something that top level players do. And Garnacho, in his few games for Manchester United, currently three in the Premier League this season, has been showing that. And the fullbacks that he's come up against haven't really had the answer to him. What I like, though, is that he's just so, so direct. Perhaps that is that kind of naivety of a young player, the ignorance of a young player. He doesn't have the fear of losing the ball. We see certain players, maybe Jack Grealish at Manchester City, for example, kind of has a fear of losing position for his side at times. That doesn't seem to be the case with Garnacho. He will happily get the ball here and just drive forward. He's so, so direct. But what I like is that he does then get his head up as well. We saw it for one of his assists against Aston Villa. He won the ball back in this area after an error from the keeper. It would have been very easy for him to just get the ball out of his feet and take the shot. That would have been a very easy thing for him to do, but no, he had the composure to get his head up, find the pass to Bruno Fernandes, I believe, and he then scored. So it was good to see that he kind of, yes, has that ability to beat people, but also then when he gets into those situations, can slow it down and make a decision. Now, is he perfect at that? Absolutely not. His decision making does need work, but I think that is natural for a young player. I think probably the example I would use for him, those of you that watched the FA Youth Cup final last year, uh, there was a lot of attention on him coming into this game because we were kind of getting to know him a bit more, kind of seeing what, he's, what he is as a player. So there was a lot of focus on that game and I didn't actually think he had a great game. I thought his decision making was a little bit poor at times. So that shows that he is still very raw. He actually went on to get the goals and assists in that game, which won United the match, which perhaps shows the quality, the potential that is there. But actually currently he is still very raw and I think that's why it's important that Ten Hag is able to manage him. But in terms of how you manage him, it's a difficult one to approach. And that's why I said this video is a bit more like discussion based rather than analysis, because what is your opinion? How do you approach it? Should he be thrust into the first team and play every week or not? Let me know what you think, because when you do stuff like this, let me just find the clip real quick. When you are able to do stuff like this, it makes it very difficult to leave you out the first team because he is winning Manchester United points. We've seen him score against Sociedad getting important points. We've seen him score against Fulham in the last minute. But look there, it's that change of pace. It's the change of pace. It's the drawing the defender in and then he's gone. It's just so, so difficult for defenders to deal with, and that agility is a natural thing. It's something that you can't really teach. He's, he's brilliant. His footwork is brilliant as well, as we can see there. A very, very exciting dribbler. Like I said, the question it leaves for me personally is, can you physically leave him out of the team? He was so good before the World Cup. How do you leave him out? There was that saying that if you are good enough, you're old enough. And that kind of is the thought process at Manchester United. It is also the thought process with Eric Ten Hag. We saw it with Ajax as well. He had a very, very young team there. Frankie De Jong, De Ligt players that he gave chances from a very young age at the top level. So perhaps he will do the same with Garnacho. Like I said, what he has now got is an opportunity. With Rashford and Sancho both not available for this Carabao Cup game. And I would presume also the Boxing Day game, especially in the case of Jadon Sancho. Garnacho has a real chance to kind of make a name for himself and almost not cement his place in the first team, but really go, this is the level that I belong at. In terms of tactically how Ten Hag wants him to play, it's kind of varied during the season, down his left-hand side especially. Sometimes we've seen Rashford asked to hold the width. Sometimes we've seen Rashford asked to come inside with Luke Shaw overlapping. The good thing is I do think that Garnacho can do both of those things. We've seen already this season that he can go down this side onto his left foot and shoot a goal. We've seen that goal that we were looking at a second ago came from something similar. But also, he does have the ability to dribble inside. Now, when he is doing this, I think something he needs to work on is probably his link play, his interchanges with his teammates. But that is something that again comes with experience, but also just getting to know his teammates. In the academy, he knows the players much better, he knows their style of play, their game, so it's easier for him to link up with them. That only comes with time. You have to play with your teammates to kind of get those understandings, so that isn't going to happen unless he is given opportunities. I think what we can say about him, though, is that there is a real raw talent there. He came from Atletico Madrid, he idolises Cristiano Ronaldo, he is of course trained with Ronaldo, played alongside Ronaldo, he's also trained and played alongside Messi with Argentina, the name Garnacho. It feels like he's destined for the top, but I do think it's important that there isn't too much pressure put on him. Ten Hag could easily just chuck him in the first team and go, go ahead, mate, see what happens, and, you know, just put him straight in the limelight. I'm not sure that's the way to do it. Give him the next couple of weeks to get a few games in while you're waiting for other players to return, absolutely. But then after that, I think his best role probably is as a substitute, with Marcus Rashford being the starter on this side, assuming Martial is fit up front. 
Garnacho can then kind of come in for the cup games, especially the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, but also some of the league games as well, the Europa League, when the situation fits it. I think his ability to kind of do something out of nothing could be a good tool for United to use from the bench, and that is probably how I would use him. A bit of a super sub, an impact player from the bench. In terms of moving forward, what is the best plan for his development? I'm, I'm not too sure. I know last summer a lot of people were talking about a loan, uh, kind of for this current season. What we've seen is that Ten Hag got it right by not loaning him out because he has had a role to play for Manchester United. And I think he will go on to have a really big role now. Now that Ronaldo is gone, United are one attacker down. Sancho isn't currently available. Garnacho is going to be a really important player for United's running. Then from the summer, you kind of go from there, see where the squad is at, see what Ten Hag wants to do. But in terms of currently, for the rest of the season, I think Garnacho is going to play a huge role for this United side. I just hope that kind of mentally and his character, he can take that on and deal with it. He can deal with that pressure. If he can, he has a very good chance of becoming spe something special as a player. The good thing for us as Manchester United fans is that we now get to watch him develop and that we get to watch him develop under a really good manager who is great at working with young players but also just seems great for this squad in general. I really think United are heading in the right direction under Ten Hag. Garnacho really could be a big benefiter of that. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. First of all, make sure to subscribe to the channel because the content is going to keep coming. Also, let me know some other videos based on United but also other clubs that you would like to see in the coming weeks. But more importantly, let me know what you think of Garnacho. What do you think kind of his potential is as a player? What do you think of his play stylistically? Tactically, do you think he fits what Ten Hag wants? How much football do you think he should be playing? Is a loan move the best in the summer or should he really become a first team member? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. Perhaps some of you don't like him as a player. If that is the case, let me know why. I'm happy to hear any opinions as long as you can kind of back it up with a bit of reasoning. So that's all I've got to say for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.